The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. This is an opinion-based program. Very good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining me on a new program of Get Real. We took uh, a break for two weeks and we are back again on the air. During the time we took a break, uh, there is an election date, August 5th, and uh, well, everything is now ready to hold the election. Finally, the election commission actually did something that he was supposed to do, um, declare the election date and actually go in. The pandemic is not over, so this election is going to be um, a, a, a trial by error kind of an election exactly. We will see what, what we will have to go through in order to make sure that we stay safe, yet exercise our right to vote. Um, the party that actually uh, will has the best uh, foot forward in um, creating a government in the upcoming election is the Sri Lanka Pudichana Perumuna. So uh, from now onwards up until the election we will be discussing exactly what these parties are going to offer you, what these parties vision for this country and what kind of a government that they want to form. Now you need to keep in mind we're coming out from a presidential election which was won by our current president Gautabi Rajpaksa with a massive margin of 1.3 million votes. The the second candidate, uh, uh, former opposition leader Sajid Premadasa, uh, did not manage to even close the gap in order to say that he actually, uh, the president, doesn't have a clear mandate. But right now, with the majority, 1.3 million, the president has a massive mandate by the people. Now, the question going into this election is uh, who will support best to carry out the president's uh, vision for this country? It's a matter of you as a voter selecting the best lot to support the president's vision. This is exactly what this election is calling us to do. So the best uh, party, not the best party, the party that has the, uh, uh, the, the best probability of winning this election is the Sri Lanka Pudjana Perumuna. So I thought of let's ask about Sri Lanka Pudjana Perumuna exactly what they are hoping to do. How can they support the president's mandate? Because at the end of the day, President Gotabe Rajpaksa is not a member of the Sri Lanka Pudjana Perumuna per se, even though he came from that ticket. He was a person who is, uh, who is just a government officer who actually supported the vision of then President Mahindra Rajpaksa and made sure that he did his part. And he had, his vision of the country aligns with the Sri Lanka Pudjana Perumuna and that's why he was selected by that party in order to be the presidential candidate. So now, uh, what exactly can the SLPP offer? I've invited uh, Dr. Nalaka Gudaheva to the studios uh, once again. Welcome back, sir. Good to see you. Um, how are things? How, how, how is the campaign? You're actually vying for the parliament this time. Number 10, I believe, from the Gampaha district. Um, so how, how's the campaign going on? Yes, uh, I will be contesting from uh, Sri Lanka Pudjana Perumana, and my number is 10. Uh, uh, things are looking good because I think people are now uh, uh, waiting for the opportunity to support the president. And the good thing is uh, the, the way the president managed uh, the affairs during the corona crisis has made uh, almost everybody uh, pleased with his presidency. Yes. Uh, when I go and um, conduct my meetings in Gampa district from uh, electorate to electorate, I find a large number of uh, UMPS, JVPS, coming for our meetings and uh, say that we are very happy with the way the president is running the country and we would like to support you. And they mostly say that the fact that, you know, thank God President Gotabe Rajapaksa is there and not the previous president, <laughs> that whole episode would have been different. Um, but let me get into the serious subject of this election. Now, yes, um, the president wants uh, uh, people who can support him. That's exactly what he is looking for from this election. Sri Lanka Podijana Perumuna seems to be the party that has the most number of people who will support the president. But then again, the 
opposition's accusation is the fact that there's a massive faction between, uh, you know, a fraction between the Sri Lanka Pudhuchana Perumuna, the Mahinda Rajapaksa clan, and the uh, President Gotabe Rajapaksa clan. I'll ask you outright, uh, Dr. Nalaka, is there a fraction in the party? No, I don't think there's a fraction. Uh, you know, in a large political party, there are always different views amongst people. But usually in politics, you always align with somebody. And when people align with a leader within the party, there are so many leaders, you always try to say, you know, you know, I'm supporting this guy, the others are no good kind of story. We saw that even before uh, Mr. Gotabi Rajapaksha was nominated as the party candidate. Uh, President Mahindra Rajapaksha, who is the leader of the party, did not declare the presidency shell candidacy of uh, uh, Mr. Gotabi Rajapaksha until uh, 2019 October. Mm. That was a strategic move. Uh, only very few of us knew that he would be the candidate for sure. So because the others didn't know who the candidate would be, they were split into fractions. Right? They thought that somebody else mm. would come. So they were not uh, willing to support directly. The current situation is also very similar to that. Uh, currently, uh, it is not the leadership, it's not uh, uh, His Excellency Kotabe Rajapaksha and the Honorable Prime Minister who are having a problem. They don't have a problem. They're very much seeing eye to eye. <laughs> but uh, supporters uh, naturally are sometimes split. And the way they, what they say, what they, the way they act, sometimes gives the wrong impression. Uh, so if you ask about the party, at the party leadership level, there's absolutely no fraction. The thinking of President Gotabe Rajapaksa and uh, the thinking of uh, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa, former president, is pretty much the same. There is absolutely no two visions. Uh, you know, how we saw back in 2015, the president's vision was completely different from the government's vision. That is not what will, in case uh, the Sri Lanka Podhichana Peruna pulls ahead and forms a government, we are not going to see a repeat of 2015. No, absolutely not, because the president uh, faced the election with a clear manifesto. Uh, his manifesto was uh, drafted uh, taking his views into account and also the views of so many other people. So many uh, people participated in finalizing this manifesto and one main group in that exercise was the party itself. Sri Lanka Podhujana Peramuna. Sri Lanka Podhujana Peramuna conducted a series of interviews throughout the country, uh, gathered data as to what the people's expectations are, what the problems of the people are and discussed with uh, us people at Vyatmag and various other organizations were involved and finally we all came up with a plan which was in line with the president's vision. So the manifesto that has been presented is everybody's manifesto. Mm. So absolutely there's no split uh, as to what should be done. Everybody's in agreement that this is the manifesto we should implement. The biggest conversation uh, prior <coughs> to this entire corona crisis was the fact that, you know, um, uh, the word Vietun uh, uh, should go into the parliament. Uh, professionals should be there in parliament, but then again, we know the reality. You know, you need a mix of everyone uh, so that actually that parliament represents uh, each and every, uh, uh, you know, party of, of our society. Uh, w what is your take on the you? Do you think um, we need a completely new type of a parliament this time around? If you um, go back to uh, uh, His Excellency Gotabe Rajapaksa's first address to the parliament after he won, uh, he spoke of something of great importance here. He referred to the era when he used to come to parliament when he was a kid. His father was a parliamentarian at this time, Honorable D. Rajapaksha. He said, when I used to come to parliament those days, I used to hear uh, 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 great or uh, great speeches in the parliament. I saw great debates in the parliament. School school children could come to the parliament, sit in the gallery and learn something from the parliament. And he said that quality I don't see today. So that was a very bold statement that he made inside the parliament. He said this has to be changed. So I think in at the, in this election we need to keep that in mind. The parliament probably is not catering to the needs of the people the way it used to. It doesn't mean that all the parliamentarians are bad, but the mix probably is not what the people are expecting to see. So at the next election, we must try to improve the quality by bringing some fresh faces, ed educated people, 
and get a better mix. And uh, the answer to your question is parliament does not mean that it's a place only for educated people. It's a place for people with wisdom. Mm. The wisdom comes not only through formal education, but through experience, by dealing with people. So if you have wisdom, I think you are suitable for parliament. Uh, this next parliament is going to have a massive task of rebuilding this country because the you were talking about the president's vision, but that was pre uh, corona crisis um, that was uh, way back in uh, 2019 but now the world has completely changed uh, we're looking at covid 19's impact uh, of our economy is going to be massive and uh, this problem needs to be overcome with critical thinking um, a strategic move ahead and actually repositioning this country in a different way what we have never done before what is what can the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna offer to the people saying, look, we this is the path that we need to take in line with what the president is thinking? Yes, Corona was an unexpected thing for the whole world. Things change. Uh, many economies will now suffer. Sri Lanka will also have an obvious impact uh, due to Corona. But the policies that we presented at the presidential election, uh, overall, do not change. In fact, uh, through this crisis, it was justified what we were saying. Take for example, we were always talking about self-sufficiency in agriculture. And the corona crisis proved that we were right. Today, everybody understands that you need food security. You need to be self-sufficient in agriculture. Of course, then you need to develop that further and get into more export. Uh, and make it an export industry. But look at other things. We've always seen that we must support our local industries, local entrepreneurs. It has already been proven. The foreigners left. Mm -hmm. When there's a crisis, they are the first to run away. Right? You have to eventually depend on your local entrepreneurs. So what we are saying that we must support and develop our local entrepreneurs is again proven right. And we've, or we, at, during our, our policy preparation, we always said we must move with the technology bring new technology, right? Uh, develop our country using technology as our base. Again, the corona crisis proved that. Today, people are using technology more than ever. So most of the policy statements that President made are very much applicable to the current situation. Uh one of the other key areas that obviously what you just spoke about is the economy and how exactly are we going to fine tune this. Lots of opportunities have been open uh, in, in, in the entire world where Sri Lanka no longer needs to be known for tea or rubber or coconut or textile or tourism. We have other industry uh, industries that we can actually take a look. What kind of plan does the SLPP have for that? No, the, 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 the industry that will grow, we were very clear. Uh, we need to move into more technological areas. We must use the real strengths of our people. The human capital is the, the base on which we must build our economy. So we were always talking about uh, growing industry like IT industry. I mean, that again does not change with the current development. Uh, that will continue to be the case. Uh, we will support that. But areas like, let's say, um, textile, which is bringing $5.5 billion revenue to the country, we don't have to give up that. But we need to go and support those industries to develop their own raw material. And that one mistake that we did over the years is not developing this raw material basis. As a result, even though we bring $5.5 billion to the country, almost $3 billion or more yeah. goes back. I mean, that we should have thought long time ago. Today, we should not look at that and say, this industry is not important. Because that industry caters to a large number of people in this country in terms of employment. So we must protect that, but we must change the approach towards that. And also, if you look at um, areas like agriculture, we are exporting only uh, $2.6 billion of agricultural products in this country. But smaller countries than us, are exporting 20 times, 30 times more than that mm. uh, uh, in, in agriculture. So we have so much potential to make even agriculture a very big uh, industrial uh, industry. Uh, so uh, these areas, if you really focus, I think we still have a lot of opportunities left. We Not everything is lost due to corona crisis. Corona crisis has opened up uh, our eyes and many opportunities. Well, there's a lot more to discuss. Uh, let's take a short commercial break. Uh, you're watching Get Real. I'm in conversation with Dr. Nalaka Gurahi. When we come back, we'll talk about the MCC. What exactly is the real story behind that? We'll be right back.
Welcome back everyone to Get Real. I'm in conversation with Dr. Nalaka Gudehewa. What exactly does the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna has to offer in the upcoming presidential election? One of the key hot topics is the fact that the uh, Millennium Challenge Corporation Agreement um, initially prior to the elec uh, presidential election President uh, Gotabe Rajapaksa says this is not going to, if it is harming Sri Lanka, it's not going to happen. Um, there was a commission that was uh, sent out by the president to look into it. They came back. They said, well, there are lots of areas which is harmful to Sri Lanka. Uh, but then again, there is no definite word saying, nope, this is not done because the American embassy keeps coming back saying the government has not rejected this. It's still in the pipeline. Will a future Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna government sign this? I don't think Sri Lanka government will sign this uh, agreement as it is when it was um, originally uh, presented or rather discussed by the previous government based on the information that we found. We were opposing that. At that time we didn't have the real information in hand. Uh, based on the little information that we had, we uh, figured that it is not good for the country and we opposed. And after the government changed, we went into great detail. We appointed a committee. Committee has now submitted its report uh, to the president. And from what has come out, it is very clear what we were saying earlier was correct. The, 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 the agreement is harmful to the country. And you, I, I don't think we should blame uh, USA or anybody for that. What is exactly uh, harmful to the country? The United States keep harping about the fact that, you know, hey, we are helping you to rebuild your land registry system and your road network, the transportation yeah. system. Uh, apparently, uh, outright, if somebody, you know, at the end of the day, the layman out there is not going to go into, you know, read the whole report and then decide to himself, this is all what is being reported in the media, what they See, so what exactly is so harmful? $450 million outright uh, uh, as a grant. No, that's exactly what I, what, 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 what I mentioned. You can't blame USA for that. When you negotiate with the country, another country, it is all about how you negotiate an agreement. If a negotiation process is kind of one-sided and you don't understand what you want, eventually negotiation ends up being one-sided. It is not only the MCC, it, almost every uh, agreement that the previous government started negotiating or completed was, the, was in, ended up the same way. It was all one-sided. Singapore agreement, ETCA, everything. So even MCC, even though it looks like a grant, there are many loopholes in that. Uh, it is like, you know, you provide a grant for Sri Lanka to do something, but once you do that, let's say a project, let's say transportation improvement, the all uh, intellectual property rights related to that project remain with MCC. You can't do that. This is a sovereign country. And certain things that they have proposed, like you know, the land law changes, are against the constitution itself. So you can't do that. So uh, I wonder how come somebody uh, agree to these things without even considering the fact that you are trying to do something illegal as per our constitution. Crown land uh, cannot be played with. And this agreement proposes something like that. Sometimes certain things, there are, there are little things like this. Uh, once you uh, sign this agreement and approve that with the, by the parliament, subsequently some officers are given uh, the power to change those things. How can you change something that was approved by the parliament? So there are many, many areas that the committee has highlighted, which are very much in line with the weaknesses that we showed. And the way it looks, there's absolutely no way that we can sign it. This begs the question, what kind of a foreign policy will the future SLPP government have? Um, because you know in 2005, at the height of the war, in 2005 again, back in 2012, uh, the height of the war, the pre uh, President Mahindra Rajapaksa government was pretty much uh, seen as a government that was against uh, foreign relations uh, with key powers like the United States, UK, everybody was hammering us. Uh, trying to make sure that we stop the fall and uh, the war. Thank God we didn't do that. Uh, but so, what kind of a foreign policy will we see under President Gotabe Rajpaksa uh, or, and a future uh, SLPP government? Are we going to go back into that times and you know isolate ourselves and you know operate alone? get, uh, you know, support from these countries we've never heard before. Uh, something like that. Is, is that what we are looking at or something different? 
No, I think uh, the president, during the presidential candidate, very clearly explained what he wants to do. He said, I want to be friends of all countries, but I will give first priority to maintaining my sovereignty. That's the most important thing. We, we, we don't be taking sides. We don't be, uh, we but don't want to... But will that work, doctor? Because the world is changed big time. Especially with, when it comes to the COVID crisis and everybody's looking for, uh, 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 you know, friends all around the world, whether they are superpowers or not. Uh, every country needs some kind of support. Um, we've seen uh, that was proven. So do you think, you know, keeping uh, uh, non-allied uh, type of uh, approach would work? No, I think we, we can and we should because we are, we are located in such a strategic location uh, we are important to everybody. So if you take one side, we are always making other side our enemy. So we have to be very careful in managing that. So it's a difficult thing. Of course, in the, in the, in the geopolitics, it's a difficult thing to maintain your independence, but we must always try to do that uh, because we need all these people. And you don't know how the world will change uh, with, with, with time. Uh, the, but whatever we do, the, what the president made very clear was, for us, our sovereignty is more important than anything else. That we will not compromise. So if, it, if anybody is trying to exploit that, that we can't tolerate that. Will you, uh, will a future government sit down with the, with the Americans and again renegotiate the MCC? That's a, that, that's a decision for the future government to take. I don't think I'm in a position to comment on that. As far as I see, the current MCC agreement is a no-go. That it's something that we cannot accept. Uh, so far, the committee has presented its findings to the president. Uh, I don't think the uh, cabinet has met yet to discuss that. Once the cabinet meets, a formal decision will be taken. All right, uh, let's talk about the economy, um, uh, an area that you are an expert in. Um, uh, currently, we are going to take a hit. Uh, a massive hit, uh, certain industries. And um, about uh, two weeks back, the central bank, after a very good discussion with the president, uh, <laughs> worked overnight and gave loans and recessions and things like that to the people. That amount, which was given, uh, I think, around 150 billion, 150 rupees, billion. Um, is a massive amount. Yeah. From where is that money coming? And how exactly is that going to recover the economy? Because just take us through that economy uh, itself. Because people understand, you know, uh, the, the question everybody is asking, you all were hiding 150 billion rupees? Uh, what exactly is this? No, in, a, in managing the economy, there are uh, different things government have to do at different times. So there are many ways government can raise money, it can borrow, it can print, it can tax people. So whatever the way, the government has to manage its funds and carry out the country's affairs. Here we are in a crisis. Uh, the, 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 the people don't have money, uh, businesses are down, so we have to do everything possible to get this economy reactivated. Reactivation means you have to release money to the people. And for that, the government has taken a decision to release this money. Uh, and where, from where it comes is not the issue. The issue is that it has to go. It has to go to people. That's the only way the money circulation will begin. Our problem is now, even though we have taken a decision to release that 150 billion, uh, as of the date that the president met that uh, central bank senior team, only about 600 million had been released. So that was a serious flow. That is why President was uh, kind of annoyed and he was saying that you have to expedite this process. Uh, once the government takes some policy decisions, it is important that the officers go and implement those policies. And there was a lapse uh, there. I don't point fingers at Central Bank only. There would have been many other uh, parties who were responsible for this. Uh, now things are coming out. Uh, but. This is something that we need to correct. When you're in a crisis, everybody has to act How fast. are you deviating from the previous government's monetary approach? Uh, what's the key difference between how they did it? Because uh, uh, what they also continuously say is the fact that, yes, we need to release money, we need to get this uh, money circulation going on. Uh, but they don't uh, agree on the borrowings uh, where we have to raise the debt ceiling. Uh, how do you address that? 
Uh, did the previous government <laughs> have any policy? I don't think so. <laughs> previous, Good previous, question. <laughs> previous government had so many different economic policies during their five years. Yeah, yeah. And I, I remember the <laughs> prime minister was giving around fifteen speeches. Yeah, at, uh, at least, at least minimum ten different uh, economic policy no, statements we saw. So I don't think the previous government had any policy. So, so I can't say we are different to them. I don't know exactly what the policy was. We were very clear as to what we need to do. We said we want to relax this taxation. We want to bring the, <clears throat> the, the interest rates down. We must allow the businesses to thrive and government should support as much as we could for the private sector to come up. So we were very, very clear on that. We are trying our best to implement that and that won't change. We need to get this economy back on track. Um, is it an election gimmick where you all have reduced the taxes and will those taxes come back right after maybe perhaps on August 7th? <laughs> no, if it, uh, if, it is, no, if it was to be a gimmick, hmm, we would have waited until election comes. The taxes were relaxed as soon as the president got elected and the election was to be far away. Yeah. So that was never an election gimmick. That is something that we believed in. We believe in uh, relax tax policy, a simplified, reduced tax policy. And uh, that was implemented as soon as he came to power. And that's, uh, that made little life difficult for us because the corona crisis came. But the policy will not change and we will continue to look at it that way. How exactly uh, would you, foreign investment be uh, playing a role in this new uh, approach towards the economy? Are, are we going to see uh, you know, an open economy where we ask everybody to come and pitch in? Because the port city is right there and it, it needs to start uh, you know, uh, getting in investors there. If not, it's going to be just a pile of land uh, which will not be utilized. Uh, so how exactly are we going to you know, get that started, get the economy, get our foreign investors uh, to come back and show them that Sri Lanka is actually a good place to invest in. Yes, Sri Lanka will always be a good place to invest because Sri Lanka, because of our geographical location, if we get our act together, if we put our processes together, would be one of the best places to uh, operate as a hub for the entire region. That's the advantage we have. When the foreign investors come here, they should not be looking at business opportunities within the country, but they should be looking at business opportunities in the whole region. So we want to develop as an economic hub and uh, foreign investors will always Are be Are we ready. trying to aim to take over Singapore's position? We always had that opportunity to take over Singapore's position, but we never implemented what we should have done. Uh, if right, Singapore moved forward, it has gone very far now. It will take time for us to catch up. But if we are now focused and believe in our strengths, uh, we can also do something similar to that. Tourism industry, once again, is taking another hit because of COVID-19. Mm. You think focusing on the tourism industry is, is a prudent act or should we not, should we like look at something else uh, as a key industry that we need to develop? Because at the end of the day, uh, you saw uh, April uh, attacks actually dipped the whole curve and it went really down and then it was starting to come up a little by little and then the corona crisis came and we don't know exactly how long because uh, the way we operated, we cannot operate anymore. So uh, people are actually looking at, uh, I think, but the president and the government was thinking, you know, to promote the country as a safe destination, uh, a health safe destination. Do you think that is still the way forward? Yes, um, I always believe in tourism and uh, we always believe in tourism because when we talk about development, we must look at our opportunities. Given Sri Lanka's um, the tourism attractions that we have, unmatchable uh, compared to uh, many other tourism destinations which are thriving today. Uh, we have so much potential to grow. The crisis that we are facing today and also the, the, the Easter Sunday attack which affected tourism last year does not change our strategy. Tourism will always be here. We must develop that. But sometimes the targets may change. When uh, President presented his manifesto, we were targeting a $10 billion industry by 2020. Mm. Maybe, maybe now we have to adjust that. We will not be able to go there because of the crisis. But as, uh, but as an industry which we need to focus on, tourism will always be uh, on top of mind. Tourism uh, is in par with the airline industry. 
uh, airline industry is not exactly in a good position right now either, uh, due to the fact even the, the chairman came and said that um, the, the the money that they owe is to the government, and it, it sounded as if you know it's a simple thing the government uh, owes the debt, so there is no crisis here. But at the end of the day, there is a crisis. Uh, what exactly um, can the new government? You know, are we just going to keep pumping money into that uh, airline and make sure that? Or are we going to uh, have a fresh approach? See, if you look at Sri Lanka airlines, <coughs> by 2015, they had a good strategy in place to come out of this crisis. There was a three-year plan. And uh, the, the, when they were going through the crisis of 2011-2014 period, due to huge uh, fuel cost, uh, that was an unreasonable time to compare with the rest. But if you look at 2015 beginning, the losses were coming down. Mm. And there was a plan to improve that, to bring it down further. But when the new government came, they completely disregarded that plan. And in fact, they changed it. As a result, the losses increased again. But that does not mean the overall strategy of keeping an airline to support the rest of the uh, tourism and other industries should change. Uh, now, corona crisis proved the importance of having a national in airline. Who would have brought all our people back if we didn't have an airline? Mm -hmm. So we need it. But we should not look at the uh, Sri Lankan airline in isolation. We must look at the airport. We must look at the tourism industry. We must look at all the peripheral uh, opportunities for us to make money. And also we must be a little open. Allow other uh, airlines also to fly rather than putting so much restrictions on that in order to protect Sri Lankan airlines. Uh, so overall, if you have a right strategy, I think we must keep it and we can, we can make money also. Because there are so many services that we can offer in relation to airline industry, again using Sri Lanka as a hub. Uh, indeed, uh, this, all these plans in order to implement um, the Sri Lanka Podujana Permona needs to get uh, uh, power in the upcoming uh, general election uh, and perhaps the super majority, the two third, uh, so that they can actually implement whatever they are planning on and pl uh, telling us right now. So uh, I want to get uh, Dr. Nalka Gudeheva's take on that as well, but before that, let's take a short commercial break. You're watching Get Real. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to Get Real. I'm in conversation with Dr. Nalaka Gudeheva. He's vying for your vote in the Gampaha district, number 10, from the Sri Lanka Pudjana Peramuna. Um, doctor, one of the key things that, you know, we t talked about all these plans. Now, this has to be implemented uh, after you're gaining power, but that also has to be, you know, you need to get the two-thirds majority uh, in order to make sure that you do not bow down to, you know, other whims and needs of minority parties uh, because uh, at the end of the day, any government, since I think in the 90s, 1980s have not been able to implement what they promised during the election time because at the end of the day when they gain power they don't have a two-thirds majority so they had to go scouting for the two-thirds do you think that's going to happen to you all this time as well or two-thirds is a done deal two-thirds is the best situation to be in and right now given the the split in our position uh, there's a there's a big chance that we can get closer to there we must try harder to reach that. I think in politics, you must always try to, hard to reach your goal. Uh, however, if you don't do that, there are problems which are facing today with the current constitution, which will continue, which is which, is, which might not affect Gotabe Rajapaksa presidency, because he has a, a good prime minister who would, who would support him. Uh, President and the prime minister will work together, so the next five years, we may be able to manage it. But beyond that, Sri Lanka is going to face problems, because we all know with this 19th amendment, it is very difficult for the president and prime minister to work together if they have different views. Mm. So the future future is bleak. So it's, it's very important we get to third and change this. We have to have a, a fresh constitution which will overcome all the problems that we were discussing for the last so many years. Our constitution has changed so many times, 19 times yeah. for that matter. And it, while it was changed, not all changes are good for the country. Some changes are bad. So now 
rather than trying to meddle with the existing constitution, the best thing would be to go and do something fresh. And for that, two-thirds would be required. When I was small, I remember President Chandrika Kumarathunga also say, uttering these same words, we need to change the constitution, we need to change the constitution, but it has never been able to, uh, to be done. Because of the simple fact that we are a multi-ethnic country, because uh, we have to look into every uh, single ethnicity and see what their needs are, do you think what you just mentioned is a achievable? See, a changing constitution, depending on the, the, the majority support, is a good thing. What President Chandrika Bandarana was trying to do, what they were promoting, people did not accept. That is why it was rejected. Their proposals were not accepted to the people, so the, the momentum gathered against that, and uh, the, the, everybody said no for a new constitution. That's what happened. But here, when I say we may need a new constitution, I mean, I, I, the, the final elements we need to discuss. What I'm pointing out is it has changed so many times. So either you must do a major, uh, the rehaul of the current constitution amendments, or you must look at something totally fresh. Uh, you were talking about the split uh, in the opposition. Uh, you are coming from the Gampahad uh, district, which is, uh, you know, which has a, a commanding uh, Catholic population. We saw, um, you know, certain accusation made against uh, His Eminence uh, Cardinal Malcolm Ranjit um, with regard to, you know, using him as a political tool, which, uh, which I think uh, a deplorable thing to do. Uh, what is what? What are you hearing when, when you go and speak to, you know, a lot of Catholic communities uh, in, in your district? Um, what are you hearing from them? His Eminence, uh, Cardinal Malcolm Ranjit, prevented a potential bloodshed in this country because of the way he behaved and controlled his uh, uh, troops uh, during the, the Easter Sunday attack. And that was the time he demonstrated yeah. true leadership. Yeah. And I think as citizens of this country, we all must respect that. He, we, 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 we all must respect that. And just because he prevented that bloodshed, it doesn't mean that he cannot forget about his uh, people, the Catholics. He has a responsibility towards that. And when there is no justice for them, for a long period, he has to speak on behalf of Catholics. And that is what he did. And if somebody comes and says, you know, the Cardinal, uh, His Eminence, uh, Cardinal Malcolm Ranji talking on behalf of Catholics is a political act, I think that is insane. And that's a real in insult. Uh, to a uh, true leader, and uh, we, we condemn that kind of statements. You see this massive split in the opposition. Um, they are actually vying for people's vote to become and be in the opposition. Uh, not exactly per se to take power of the government, but what they were, the pitch is, you know, you need a very strong opposition in order to... Nice opposition. <laughs> this thing, um, uh, in my personal opinion, I think it's, it's, it's a dud deal because, you know, if you're saying, okay, we want to sit in the opposition, why are you even coming here uh, asking for votes? But, but what I want to talk about is the fact that is that particular spill, the split between, between the United National Party and the faction of uh, uh, former opposition leader Sajid Premadas, is that helping um, the Sri Lanka Pudijana Peramuna to gain uh, some kind of a trust of the opposition's uh, members? Because at the end of the day, they don't know where to go. The UNP member has been completely deserted by both these factions. There is no ideology being practiced. Mm. Uh, a true ideology of the U United National Party is not being practiced from both sides. Do you all have a solution for that? <laughs> I don't think we can provide solution for no, that. No, I mean for the for the for the member on the ground who's actually looking for you know at the end of the day they want to live in a uh, better country, uh, not just for the SLPP supporter but for them as well. Yeah, it's very very unfortunate what has happened to the UMP, a great party, uh, for which has a very very long history in the country. Today in this kind of a mess. And uh, the Amit is due to their own makings, of course. Uh, today, even though they are split and try to uh, uh, pitch for the opposition uh, leadership, uh, they are more or less the same people. I mean, they are the very people who sat together when the country was betrayed by the, the previous government. They were together when the country's economy was disrupted. They were together when all our value system was, you know, disregarded. So none of them, whether they are in UMP or the other party, can escape from the responsibility for the Easter Sunday 
attack. So, despite the fact that they are in different parties, people will reject them. Uh, they may they may get some votes, but I, I think they'll perform very poorly during this election. But the people who were supporting them earlier, the, the the moderate people, the real patriots, seem to be coming out of those parties and coming towards us. That's why I mentioned at the very beginning also, at my meetings in Gampa district, I find large number of UMPs coming and telling me now they live in the party, they want to be with the president. I mean, not more than anything, they want to be the president. So they're supporting us. Uh, we are running out of time, and I want to give you the uh, opportunity to tell me uh, what are the key areas that uh, people in your district is now looking for uh, from the uh, from a future SLPP government. What do they want? Because um, I, I'm sure tourism is a massive industry in that particular district, and most of the people are hammered by this. Uh, so, so, what are what are the key issues for that? See, if you take Gampa, Gampa is a large district, 2.4 million population. Even though it's such a large uh, district, I don't think uh, we have done enough for that district over the years. No major project has come to Gampa district for a very, very long period. The education sector, the unemployment, uh, the, the, the environmental issues, all those are problems still. So you need a proper plan for Gampa district. That is exactly what uh, His Excellency President proposed during the presidential uh, election. We sat with him, we sat with people from Gampa, we identified areas where we need to focus and prioritize. And those areas we have now presented as a development plan for Gampa. Uh, when I'm, con I'm contesting for uh, Gampa district, uh, I have presented a, a tenfold uh, development plan, which is, of course, part of President's vision for Gampa district, and that is what we are going to implement. All right, I wish you all the best. Uh, I hope to uh, speak to you perhaps as a minister. <laughs> that is up to the President and the Prime Minister. I, 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 I sincerely hope that uh, I, I get that privilege. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nalika Gudeheva, uh, for uh, coming here and uh, speaking to us. Uh, a very good uh, discussion, as always. Well, that's it uh, for this program. I'll be back again at 9.35 with World News. See you then. Bye for now.